The Mediterranean Basin is one of the planet's most biologically rich and complex regions. The crossroads of Europe, Asia and Africa is considered to be one of Earth's biodiversity hotspots. A vast number of both animal and plant species unique to the region live in its various habitats. The Mediterranean Basin is located in one of the planet's temperate zones. The subtropical climate makes it cold and wet here in winter, hot and dry in summer, and mild and rainy in autumn and spring. Occupied by human beings for more than 8,000 years, the Mediterranean Basin has experienced dramatic changes to its forest and woodland areas. But nevertheless, they are still among the most diverse on the planet. From marshlands to high mountain ranges, from forests of holm and cork oaks to oak and pine forests high up in the mountains. All of them are home to thousands of animal and plant species whose paths cross on their adventures through life. And each one of them has a story to tell. Stories of the Mediterranean Forest the hidden inhabitants of the Sierra Morena. In this land where the temperatures in summer often surpass 30 degrees Celsius, life during the hottest months of the year gets particularly complicated. In some areas that receive barely 500 millimeters of rain per year, fresh water is frequently hard to find. Most of the trees that populate the area have thick, resistant leaves designed to preserve water during the hot summer weather. Many animal species have been forced to adapt to this semi-arid Mediterranean climate by reducing their size and altering their shape. But quite to the contrary of what you might expect, this is a biodiversity hotspot. Sierra Morena. Stretching some 400 kilometers long, the Sierra Morena is a mountain range in the southern part of the Iberian Peninsula. Few peaks in the Sierra Morena are higher than 1,300 meters. Its vegetation is perfectly adapted to the area's predominantly semi-arid climate. Most of the forests in Central and Northern Europe are dominated by a dozen species of trees at most. The forests in Southern Europe, however, are much more diverse, in spite of the blazing heat and dried out terrain. 
The Sierra Morena is home to more than 50 tree species and countless small plant species. The prevailing trees in the driest areas are the holm oak and cork oak, which together with the characteristic olive groves make up the landscape of these mountains. These evergreen trees have thick, durable leaves that are designed to conserve water when the summer temperatures soar. In this mountain range, we also find various species of conifers, native stone pine forests, and other woods that have been replanted by man, all of which color the landscapes of the Sierra Morena a very intense green. All these tree species are accompanied by a complex mosaic of plants in which aromatic herbs and woody bushes stand out. Rock rose, rosemary, lavender, thyme, as well as many other small plant species, cover this jumbled landscape with a multicolored mantle in springtime. The spring in the Sierra Morena is a tribute to life. And it's here, in this complex ecosystem, where we can find the most endangered feline on the face of the planet, the Iberian lynx. The Iberian lynx is a species that's endemic to southern Europe, but whose territory today has been reduced to small enclaves in the southern half of the Iberian Peninsula. And the Sierra Morena is one of them. This solitary male is patrolling his hunting grounds in search of food. As always, he moves silently to catch any potential prey unawares. A group of Iberian magpies detect his presence and start to screech, making a tremendous ruckus. This is the warning signal for all the inhabitants of this corner of the Sierra Morena that the stealthy feline is on the prowl. Despite the magpie's racket, the lynx keeps patrolling his hunting grounds. He knows that concealed in the dense vegetation is his favorite prey, rabbits. Rabbits seek refuge and food in the areas where the vegetation is thickest. They're adapted to this environment. Their digestive system is perfectly designed to extract nutrients and water from the vegetation surrounding them. Rabbits are a vital link in the food chain here, and all the populations of carnivores depend on them. Although rabbits reproduce easily, diseases have decimated their populations in some areas. This was one of the reasons why the Iberian lynx was on the brink of extinction. In the late 20th century, fewer than 100 Iberian lynxes lived in the wild. The solitary lynx isn't alone. The most majestic of all eagles is gliding in the sky and perches close to where the young male is prowling. The golden eagle is an expert hunter, and although it may eat other prey and even carrion, rabbit is an essential part of its diet. If he wants to eat today, the lynx had better keep a sharp eye out. From his raised perch, the golden eagle has a better view and can spot any movement more quickly, even in the distance. The lynx's strategy to emerge triumphant is to camouflage itself in the vegetation. With his spotted coat, which matches the dense foliage, he goes totally unnoticed. Something is moving in the thick vegetation. The young male took advantage of the eagle being busy preening to beat him this time.
The lynx needs to eat a rabbit a day in order to survive. The Iberian lynx's existence is inextricably linked to these rabbits, which make up more than 80% of its diet. The Iberian lynx survives like this day after day. Tomorrow, he'll begin the process of finding and catching a rabbit all over again. The golden eagle no longer has any business to tend to here and decides to try his luck somewhere else. After eating his meal, it's time for a thorough cleaning. Immaculate, healthy fur is essential to survive in this stifling environment. Smaller than the Eurasian lynx, the Iberian lynx is the clearest example of a species that is adapted to the Mediterranean forest. After being isolated during the glacial periods, the lynx split into the two European species that we know today. At just 15 kilograms, the Iberian lynx weighs only half as much as its cousin, the better known Eurasian lynx. Its smaller size and shorter fur allow it to withstand the hot summers of southern Europe. But even if the summers are hot, the rain does put in an appearance every now and then. Although scarce, the watercourses are the arteries that pump life into the Sierra Morena. Near this riverbed, where food is abundant, a pair of grey herons has built their nest. Five slender chicks wait impatiently for their parents. The nest, covering little more than a square meter, is already growing too small for them. And so the grey heron chicks, who are already pretty grown up, begin to explore their surroundings. They're confident enough already to inspect the vicinity of the nest and to make a few short excursions. That is, without going too far. Since they are large birds equipped with powerful beaks, adult grey herons have few predators. But their eggs and chicks are very vulnerable, so their parents don't tend to leave the nest unguarded. Only when the chicks are quite large do they dare to leave them unattended. Plus, with five hungry mouths to feed, both parents have to spend their time constantly looking for food.
One of the intrepid chicks tries to reach the higher branches. He feels sure he can achieve his goal. But something goes wrong. Fortunately, the lower branches break his fall. Leaving the grey heron nest behind, we gradually descend the river. Downstream, we run into another of the Sierra Morena's hidden inhabitants, the European pond turtle. This European pond turtle doesn't feel very comfortable among the rocks in the river. Here, he doesn't have any mud to hide in if danger appears, and he'd prefer to find some place quieter and more protected where he can go unseen. The pond turtle is a species that is adapted to life in all kinds of bodies and courses of water, but it prefers to live where the current is slow and the vegetation abundant, which affords it protection. The European pond turtle can be found throughout the whole Mediterranean basin, where the weather conditions are the most favorable for it. Nevertheless, we can find populations of this turtle species in almost all of Europe and part of Asia. This small reptile has a black shell covered with yellow radial markings and some characteristic yellow spots on the head and extremities that differentiate it from other turtle species. It has finally found a spot to its liking, where there are calm waters with plenty of mud and abundant vegetation, a perfect place to hide and feed. The pond turtle is an opportunist. It takes advantage of any food source it finds available. Insects, amphibians, fish, carrion, and even plants form part of its normal diet. In the hottest months, if the water level drops a lot, some pond turtles spend the days half buried among the vegetation.
Watercourses are essential for life. A large number of species concentrate around them, looking for food and a place to hide from predators in the water or in the vegetation surrounding them. The biodiversity in the rivers and streams of the Sierra Morena is surprising. And this is where we find the grey heron, which is working hard to get food to take back to the 500 chicks waiting in the nest. The grey heron is an excellent fisher, but there's an even more effective predator. The common kingfisher. Dressed in spectacular plumage and flying very fast, the common kingfisher is a small bird that is intimately linked to watercourses. It spends a lot of its time preening. It uses its beak to comb its feathers. And at the same time, it spreads a grease that the bird itself produces. This provides it with the perfect protection when it dives into the river. Common kingfisher and the grey heron don't compete for food and for a very simple reason, size. While the grey heron weighs around two kilograms, the little common fisher weighs no more than 25 grams and its prey are also small. Despite its diminutive size, the common kingfisher is a formidable predator. It not only feeds on fish, but also catches adult and larval aquatic insects, tadpoles, and even small amphibians. The common kingfisher is a bird that's easy to find throughout Europe and North Africa, and there are even populations in a good part of Asia. It always looks for rivers or streams that have good quality water and more or less dense vegetation that provides it with perches from which to hunt its prey. Nightfall comes, and with it, one of the most mythical and mistreated creatures appears. The wolf. Wolves were hunted to total extinction in the Sierra Morena. Nevertheless, every now and then, a solitary wolf will appear in these inhospitable mountains. The red deer stay active at night, safe in the knowledge that few predators remain in the Sierra Morena who can challenge them. Their instincts, however, tell them that danger is near.
A young red deer is wandering away from the group, and a slip-up like that could cost him his life. It enters the thick forest. When the vegetation is so dense and the leaves on the trees create a green canopy, the rays of sunlight tread more lightly on the forest floor, and the grass is a little fresher and appetizing. By chance, the lone wolf crosses paths with a young red deer. Wolves hunt in packs, and a single wolf runs a big risk if it tries to take down such a big, strong animal. That would take a lot of energy, and the wolf might even be seriously injured. The wolf decides a better idea would be to go look for smaller prey. The hungry wolf got lucky. He's taken a path straight to some carrion. Those are the proteins he needs so badly, and he's gotten them without having to expend an ounce of energy. Now it's time to satisfy his hungry stomach. Someone interrupts his dinner. The lone wolf doesn't want to fight with the lynx and decides it would be better to take off, but not without his dinner. The night is drawing to an end, and the wolf, his belly full, rolls on the ground. A good dirt bath to clean his fur feels great before looking for a quiet, secluded place to sleep. The implacable sun gradually changes the color of the landscape as the green of spring that covered the mountains at the start of summer turns into a characteristic straw color that indicates the absence of life. All the inhabitants of the Sierra Morena have to adapt to living in these harsh conditions. With temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius, even some home oaks, which are so well adapted to this ecosystem, are unable to withstand the heat and end up drying out. From here on out, only the strongest and best adapted will survive.
This missile thrush chick is still waiting for his parents to give him some food, like when he was small. But that's all going to change. Now it's time for him to learn to fend for himself. The mother patiently prepares his last breakfast for him. Although his father no longer finds that the least bit cute. Faced with the chick's insistent cries for more, the mother has to make him understand that it's time for him to go find his own food. She's about to teach him a lesson that will help him become an independent missile thrush. She looks for enough food and brings it closer to feed him. but she drops it on the ground. This is the best way to teach him how he has to eat by himself. From now on, his parents won't give him any more food. And in case there's still any doubt in his mind, his father kicks him out of his territory. It's time for the youngster to face the world on his own. As the temperatures gradually rise and the rain falls less frequently, the rivers begin to dry up. And the few ponds that are left are the only places where anyone can find relief from the merciless summer heat. These small oases are the spots where all the inhabitants of the Sierra Morena meet. Hunters and prey both need water to survive. One's thirst must be quenched. Water is also indispensable to clean their bodies. And some species will fly quite far in search of some place where they can bathe. Birds need a good dip in a river or pond and not just to cool off. Bathing helps them to remove the filth and dust that builds up in their feathers during the hot days of summer. And it also helps them to get rid of bothersome parasites. And after a good bath, it's time to comb and arrange their feathers. Well cared for and preened plumage is essential for survival in this tough setting. As night falls, a Janet emerges from her den.
The concentration of small birds is greater near the river, and when it gets dark, many of them will stay to sleep in the surrounding vegetation. Now's the moment that Janet was waiting for. Genets are vivarids of African origin that live throughout the Iberian Peninsula. They normally are active at twilight and at night. This astute carnivore adapts very well to almost any ecosystem. Besides having an excellent sense of smell, its hearing and vision are also exceptionally good, which makes these animals very efficient hunters. Their diet is quite varied. Mice, rabbits, and even reptiles form part of their daily menu. But what Janet's like most of all are the little birds that sleep in the thick vegetation. With a very accurate jump, the Janet has caught a small sparrow. Janets usually start eating their prey beginning with the head, followed by the rest of the body, bones and feathers included. They take advantage of absolutely every bit of protein that their prey has to offer. The genet is a solitary animal that generally goes on the prowl at night. Depending on the amount of food available, its hunting grounds can vary in size, sometimes covering several square kilometers. The territories of males and females sometimes overlap, but never those of two genets of the same sex. The Janet continues on her way in search of more food. She's a winner in the Mediterranean forest. She's perfectly adapted to it. Not very far from where we found the stealthy Janet, another of the Sierra Morena's inhabitants couldn't withstand these tough conditions and has died. At the first light of day, the Iberian magpies begin to flit around the deer carcass, looking for something to eat. Although magpies do also eat the carrion that they may come across in the mountains, the deer carcass isn't an option for them. They can't get to the more than 100 kilograms of meat in the carcass. Their beaks aren't big enough nor strong enough to break through the tough skin and reach the flesh inside. And the only ones who can do that work have to wait for the sun to come up. Vultures are the animals in charge of making cadavers disappear from this complex ecosystem. Griffin vultures specialize in locating and eating the carcasses of large ungulates and domestic cattle.
Eliminating their cadavers prevents the spreading of diseases, and so they carry out a very efficient job of sanitation. Vultures have developed an extremely strong digestive system, one able to kill many pathogens that spread disease. They've also shown that they're highly adapted so that they can tolerate certain bacteria in their bodies. The large number of diners who have come to the banquet has drawn the attention of a young member of the royalty. This juvenile golden eagle is hungry, but he doesn't dare to fly down. The fighting among the vultures for a bit of meat convinces him that he might be badly injured if he tried to crash this party. he decides that it might be best to look for food elsewhere. In little more than five hours, a hundred vultures have turned the deer carcass into a pile of bones. But vultures aren't the only ones who feed on dead animals. Many of the Sierra Morena's inhabitants don't think twice about making use of the easy proteins that a carcass offers. And among those animals are the ants. Ants live in colonies and are one of the most successful zoological groups. They're generalist predators that look for any kind of food. Seeds, plant remains, dead insects, and if the occasion arises, they won't hesitate to make use of dead animals for food. This group of ants has found the carcass of a shrew, and little by little, they're gradually cutting off pieces of hair, skin, and meat with their mandibles. The colony will profit from anything that they can take back to the ant nest. Ants' mandibles are formidable tools, and they use them for almost everything. To chop up food, to transport materials, to build, to defend themselves, and to fight with other ants. These insects are extremely strong animals. With the aid of their mandibles, they can lift up to 100 times their own weight. Except for the two poles, we can find ants on every continent. All an ant colony needs to set up shop is for there to be plenty of food in the surrounding area. And in the Sierra Morena, there's lots of food.
In spite of how extreme the living conditions can get in the Sierra Morena, it's one of the planet's biodiversity hotspots. Hundreds of species, both plants and animals, have been forced to adapt to this semi-arid Mediterranean climate. The fight for survival is never-ending, and no one knows when or where danger will appear. And that's why every day lived is a reward for the tenacity of the thousands of living beings that inhabit these lands. But despite the survival instinct of its inhabitants, a threat is hovering over them which they can do nothing about. If the rise in temperatures that our planet is undergoing continues at its current pace, in a few years, this complex ecosystem will begin to disappear. Fortunately, today we can still fight to prevent this from happening, so that the lovely landscapes of these mountains continue to be home to the species that have been living here for thousands of years. Because they are the hidden inhabitants of the Sierra Morena.